Once again, you're welcome back to our channel, Math Made Easy with PDY, a channel that allows you to study math with ease. Okay, so in our previous lesson, we're looking at the concept of binomial expansion, binomial expansion, and then we found out that when it comes to binomial expansion, there is a theorem that is generated out of it. So we found out that a gentleman by name Pascal brought out a way you can expand binomial terms. And then in this case, he generated the Pascal triangle, which is giving us 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Can you give me the next line? 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Good. So it goes on and on and on and on to infinity. But we said that considering the Pascal triangle, it is not every time that you need to use the Pascal triangle to write expansion. And also you need to chew this. It's just a waste of time. So in this case, I introduce a way of getting the Pascal triangle. And these values here represent the coefficients of each term when it comes to the binomial expansion. Then again, we also learned that when it comes to any form of binomial expansion, the power plus one tells you the number of terms you are expected for the complete expansion to be made. Another investigation we realized was that whenever there are two terms in the expansion, as the first term reduces in order of magnitude in terms of powers, the second term automatically increases. So that is another thing we learned there. And then before I left um, the last lesson, we also came up with what we call the combination rule. The combination rule. And we said that the combination rule or formula can also be used to generate this um, coefficient. And the combination rule is given on your calculator as N combination R. Now today I'll be talking much about the combination rule so, so that we'll use it to learn the theory. So the N actually represents the power, whilst the R value represents the whole numbers from first term all the way to infinity, depending on the highest power you are expanding the value altogether. So we said that the R value always begins from zero. Zero, then one, two, it goes on and on and on and on, depending on the expansion you're making. Now this rule mathematically is given as N factorial divided by N minus R or factorial then R factorial. This is the rule. This is the rule. Now, when we talk about N factorial, factorial coming from the word factor, coming from the word factor, simply refers to the positive counting numbers of that number, the multiplication of the positive counting numbers of that number. So, for instance, if I have two factorial, the positive counting numbers found in 2 factorial will be 2 times 1. And the answer is still 2. When it comes to 3 factorial, the positive counting numbers found in 3 will be 3 multiplying 2 multiplying 1. And the final answer is 6. When it comes to 5 factorial, then it means what do you think it's going to be? The positive counting numbers in 5. We have what? Five. Five. Five times four. Thank you. Four. Times three. Three. Good. Two. Two. Then? One. Very good. One. So at the end of the day, four, five, twenty. Twenty times three, that is sixty. Sixty times two, that is one twenty. So we have one twenty. So it means that five factorial, the same answer is one twenty. Okay. Are you following what I'm doing carefully? Yes, sir. So ideally, in as much as your calculator is giving you the answer, you should be able to program and get the same value. 
you should be able to prove that. So for instance, if I had something like three combination two, ideally three combination two, the three is representing the N, the two is representing the R. So that is going to give us three factorial divided by three minus two, all factorial multiplying two factorial. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Okay, so answering this question, two co combination, sorry, three combination two, as I said, based on the rule, this is how it's supposed to be. Even though your calculator can give you the answer, you should manually be able to come up with the answer. So in this case, what we just learned is factorial as three multiplying two multiplying one or divided by three minus two is actually one. So we are going to end up getting one factorial then multiplying two factorial. And we can go further and say that two times three is giving us six divided by one factorial is the same as one, two factorial is the same as also two. So you have one times two. And the end of the day, you end up getting two going into six, which is three. So three combination two, the answer is three. And in our previous lesson, I showed you how to use a calculator to get that. Please, are you all with me? Yes, sir. Okay. So now that we've seen that this is the formula, please follow carefully. This is the formula for n combination r. Then it means we can link this up with the binomial expansion that we just linked. We can link it up. Because today we are going to look at the theorem for positive exponents. We are looking at the theorem for positive exponents. So let's look at how we can link up the combination rule to the theorem. So moving on, now we realize that if I have a plus x all to the power, let's say, 2. Let me just use, let, let me make it two. We find out that the expansion for this gives us the answer as a squared plus 2ax plus x. That is how the rule is. So as the first term is reducing in power, the second term is increasing in power. Then again, coming to a plus x to the power 3, we end up getting a cube plus 3a squared x plus 3ax squared plus x cube. Please, I hope you remember this. Yes, yes. So now we said that if we want to use the rule to generate all this, watch, watch this carefully. Watch it carefully. Now we've seen that we have n combination r, which is giving us n factorial over n minus r, all factorial, then r factorial. Now, when we talk about n factorial, we've seen that it means it's the positive integers of n, the factors of n. But from the example that I gave early on, 3 factorial is the same as 3 times 2 times 1. So, meaning what is happening to the number? So, the numbers are decreasing. They are decreasing by? 1. By 1. Good. So, it means n factorial, if I want to write the factor for n factorial, it is simply the n itself multiplying the number n reduced by 1. So, n minus 1. Then, we have times n minus 2, then we have times n minus 3, and it goes on and on and on and on until we get to 2 times 1. Do you agree with that? Because the, the n value will be reducing until we get to the last number as 1. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Good. Then again, if I have r factorial, it means it is... If I have r factorial, it means it is r multiplying r minus 1 multiplying 
r minus 2 and it goes on and on and on and on till we get to 2 then we get to 1 i hope you are with me what do you think yes, will be sir. what do you think will be n minus r all factorial how can we write the expansion for it n minus r all factorial what do you think it will be the n times n minus 1 take your time this is n minus, minus. r all factorial so how do you think we can write the expansion for it take your time even if you get two of the terms right i'm okay with it take your time it is n minus oh. r all factorial how can we write the expansion for it n minus r yes times n minus r times times n minus r minus one very good yes times times n minus r minus two very good very good now if i continue then it will be times two times one if i don't bring the times two times one or if i don't bring the times two times one then it means i have to bring the factorial sign again at wherever i ended if I don't introduce the times two times one, which is our last values of multiplication, then I need to introduce the factorial sign again. So it means if I should consider just R factorial, R factorial can be written as R times R minus one or factorial. I can end here. If I end over here, then it means the times two and times one is yet to come. That is why the factorial sign is still available. Please, are you with me? Yes, sir. Now, you see, today I'm, I'm trying to focus on this factorial value because that's what we are going to use in our subsequent lessons to come. So I want you to follow me carefully. So now, instead of you chewing the Pascal triangle, now, using the combination idea, if I have, let's say, x plus y all to the power 4, even though you may know the Pascal triangle, you can use a factorial idea to work it out or the combination rule. And how then do we use it? Now, we found out that for every binomial expansion, as the first term decreases, the second term increases in power. And here it is. So, it means... Writing the expansion for this is going to be 4 combination 0 multiplying the first term is x. And what is the power for that first term? It is 4. And the second term is y. What is happening to that second term? Its power will be increasing, so raised to the power 0. And remember I told you that whenever you put the two powers for the variables or the two terms together, it gives you the total power of the question do you remember i said that yes sir going further so time plus sorry plus the next term will be four combination one multiplying x to the power what value all right multiplying y to the power what value yeah, one then plus the next term will be yes what will be the next term what will be the combination rule four combination two for combination two multiplying x, x to the power two. two y squared plus continue for combination, combination three, three x plus nine x one to the power y to the power three are we done yes sir are we done? No. The, no. the last one will be what? No. Four combination. Four combination. Four. four. X to the power X. Y. X to the power Y to the power four. Very good. Very good. I've told you I don't want you to chew. I want you to understand and write it wholeheartedly. Now, in as much as the calculator can give you the answer, so what are we getting? Four combination zero. We saw that it is what number. Please, let's go fast, fast, fast. We don't have time. 
Yes, four combination zero. What's the answer? One. Then x to the power four is the same as x to the power four. But y to the power zero is what value? One. One. Good. Plus four combination one. What's the answer? Point it on your calculator and be fast with four. it. Four. Then x to the power three is the same as x to the power three. Then y to the power one would be the same as y. Four combination two, what's the value? Six. Six. Then x squared and then y squared. Then finally, not finally, but four combination three is what number? Four. Four. Then x to the power one and then y to the power three. Then finally, four, four combination four is what value? One. And then x one. to the power zero is what number? One. S to the power zero is also one. Then finally, y to the power four. So it means that instead of you chewing the Pascal triangle, the idea of combination and your understanding to the characteristics of um, binomial expansion as the first term reduces in power, the second term increases in power. Then we are going to have our final answer as one times one times x to the power four, final answer is x to the power four. Then this is going to give us four x cubed y, and that will be giving us six x squared y squared. Then we have four x y cubed, then finally y to the power four. Are you with me? Yes, sir. I believe it's easier for you to quote whatever I've written up here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now let's watch something here. What is the four represented in terms of combination. What does the four stand for? And and then what does the zero stand for? R. Now watch, please watch carefully. Watch carefully. Watch carefully. Now, do you see that the R value is always the R value for the second term for each term? The power for R is the same as the combination R. Look at it. The power for Y or the second term, it's always the R value. Check it. Do you see the R value here? What is the number? One. What is the power for the second term? One. So do you observe that? Have you, have you seen it? I'm going to show you yes, a formula. Sir. So look at it carefully. If you are lost, let me know and then help you out. Okay, so if you've all seen it, then now watch something. If I have A plus B all raised to the power N, ideally, what it means is that per the combination rule, it should be N combination zero, watch, then A to the power what? N. Then B to the power what? Zero. Plus, going to the next term, then we are going to have N combination 1, A to the power what? What should happen to the N. power? What will happen to the power of A? It should be what? N minus 1. N minus 1. Very good. And then B to the power what? 1. Very good. 1. Plus, hey. If you don't know and you get lost in what I'm doing and you let anything deceive you, you are going to be in trouble. So I say you should follow and also contribute. If you sit there as Egyptian mummy, for others to say it, else you sit on the fence, you are in trouble. I'm not scaring you. I'm just telling you the truth. I want you to understand. That's why I'm taking my time. Okay, going to the next term, then it will be N combination 2. A value will have a decrease in power. So what are we going to have for the power of A? N minus, N minus two. two. N minus two. And then B to the power what? Two. 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 So it two. keeps on going. It keeps on going until the B will have a power of N. The B will have a power of N. So in other words, 
from whatever I've written here, it brings out a clear formula which you need to understand. It is not always going to be the case that you write the expansion for all the terms, number of terms for the binomial expansion. They can even ask you for a particular term for which you need to know. A particular term. I'll come back to this. But what then is the rule? So if I have the formula as let's say a plus x raised to the power n, then I can bring out the combination rule as if I have it as n combination r, then it's supposed to be a to the power n minus r and then b to the sorry then x to the power r then x to the power r because always always whatever r value here when you take it out from the n value you should get whatever the power of the first term should be so this formula here is very important i'm so much interested in this formula this one you should be very careful with it you can use it to generate a particular term of a given binomial expansion and upon saying this then it means that you should always know that whenever they are talking of first term first term always has the r value to be zero whenever they are talking of second term second term always have or has the r value to be one whenever they are talking of third term the third term always has the r value to be two so what about the fifth term what do you think would be the r value you must use four, four. very good four. i've told you don't sit on the fence so you must follow what i'm teaching don't sit on the fence so it means whenever you know the highest power and then you are told the particular term you must look out for if you want to know the r value just simply do what then you subtract one from the thank you you something. must subtract one from that term given to you you must subtract one from that term given to you so that you know the r value to use student are you following me yes sir good moving forward moving forward based on what we've just done here let's take it that we are given this question so expand expand 3x plus y to the power 6 up to the second term we just need up to the second term we don't need up to any the last term we need up to the second term so we need only the first term and the second term we've just learned something about combination formula and combination r for any expansion will be let's say a to the power n minus r and then b to the power r just a simple rule so having 3x plus y all to the power 6 our first term should automatically be 6 combination 0 multiplying 3x all to the power 6 and then y to the power 0 then plus 6 combination 1 multiplying 3x to the power 5 or you can write it as 6 minus 1 is accepted or risk multiplying y to the power 1 plus dot 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 we know that's not the end of the expansion but because the question is interested in up to the second term we are ending here then now we can break it down six combination zero automatically is what value fast fast fast, fast. then one three x to the power six three x to the power six three to the power six what answer is it 
729. Again? 729. 729. 729. Then x to the power 6. y to the power 0 is the same as? 1. 1. Good. Then plus this combination 1, the answer is actually the same as? 6. And then 3x all to the power 5, what is the answer? 243. 243. Then x to the power 5. y to the power 1 is the same as y. Then plus dot dot dot. So final answer for this question is simply 1 times all this will be given as 729 x to the power 6. Then plus 2 times 620, 243. What answer do we have? 1,458. Then x to the power 5, y, plus dot, dot, dot. So this is what the solution should be when it comes to the expansion for this question. When it comes to the expansion for this question. Please, are you with me? Yes, sir. Now, again, based on whatever we've done here, I have some questions to ask. What is the coefficient? <laughs> What's the coefficient of the y term? What answer would you say? Uh, yes. One thousand four hundred and fifty-eight. Any other answer? Say so one. Any other answer? What's the coefficient of the y term? Okay. The coefficient of the y term is thousand four hundred and fifty-eight x to the power five. That is the answer to that question. They are asking of the coefficient of the y term. This is the y term. And therefore, the coefficient is an expression written in front of that y term. And it's all this. It's everything here. If they could have said that, what's the coefficient of x to the power 5 y term? Then what would have been the answer? 1,458. Thank you. That would have been the answer. What's the coefficient of x to the power 16? All right, good. I hope you are following me. Yes. Okay. So this is where the theorem comes in. This is where the theorem comes in. Please watch. This is where the theorem comes in. When I go here, when I go here, I said I'm ending over there, but I'll come back to it again. This brings up a formula, which is known as the theory, a rule which can be proven. And generally, it brings about what we call the binomial theorem altogether. But this time around, we are just considering when you have um, a positive integer. So watch this carefully. Now, so based on whatever I just did, binomial theorem for positive integers, where n belongs to the positive integer, states that if I have a plus x all to the power n, then we are going to get this, then n combination 1, then we have a n to the power that, I hope you understand what I've written here. I hope you understand. Good. I didn't want to quote this directly for you without you understanding it. Where you have the combination rule as that. I believe that is also clear for you to follow that. So please don't forget this formula, which is down here. I've stressed on it and I'm saying it again. Don't forget this rule. Don't forget this rule. 
Note that r plus 1 to the nth term of the expansion in ascending powers of x is equal to x to the power r term of that expansion. Take note of this. Okay, so I have some work examples here. We are going to do that and then uh, probably we can end the lesson on that. So let's begin. Number one. Can someone read the number one for me carefully? Using the binomial expansion, write down and simplify the first four terms of expansions. Good. So we are only interested up to the fourth term. We are not interested in all the terms, up to only the fourth term. But it doesn't mean that when you write it, you end there. You just have to introduce your continuation sign, meaning that it goes to infinity. But if I may ask, how many terms in all when you write the expansion for power 8? Nine terms. Very good. So power 10, how many terms are we expecting in all? 11. Very good. Yes. Good. So let's move on. So having 1 plus 2x all to the power 8 based on what we've just learned. Yes, can you just boldly and confidently tell me the first expression. The first term will be what? So, eight combination zero. So, it is eight combination zero. Multiplying. One. One raised to the power eight. Multiplying. Two x raised to the power zero. Very good. That's the first term. Second term will be what? Eight combination eight one combination by one to the power seven. Then two x to the power one. Third term will be what? Eight combination two <laughs> by one to the power six. Times two x to the power two. Fourth term. Eight, eight combination five. three to the power times one to the power five by two x to the power three. Okay, so eight combination zero. The answer is one. 1 to the power 8, the answer is still 1. And then 2x all to the power 0, the answer is 1. Plus 8 combination 1, what's the value? 8. eight. 1 to the power 7 is the same as 1. 2x all to the power 1 is the same as 2x. 8 combination 2, what's the answer? 28. 1 to the power 6 is 1. 2x all squared. The answer is what? 4x squared. Very good. 8 combination 3. What's the answer? 6. 1 to the power 5 is 1. 2x to the power 3. What's the answer? 8 x So finally, the expansion, the multiplication of all this will give us 1. And that is going to give us what? 16 x. And what are we getting over here? 28 times 4? 112 x squared. And then what are we getting here? 56 times 8. 448x cubed. So this is how the expansion to the fourth term, first four terms, needs to be. Are you with me? Yes, sir. I'm going to do the second one with you. Then you try your hand on the C. Mm -hmm. Let us look at the next example. So the B passes 2 minus x 
all to the power 9. What will be the first term? 9 combination 0. Multiplying by 2 to the power 9. Multiplying x. Multiplying the power 0. <laughs> Be careful, multiply minus x. minus x to the power 0. Next term. 9 combination Nine 1 combination. by 2 index 8. Minus x to the power 1. Eight combination, nine combination, two. Two to the power seven. Minus x exponent two. Nine combination. Three, two to the power six minus x exponent three. Okay, nine combination zero is one, two to the power nine. What answer do we have? 512. Minus x to the power zero, oh. the answer is one. Nine combination one is the same as nine, two to the power eight. What answer do we have? 256. 256. Now, minus x always to the power 1 is the same as? Minus x. Minus x. 9 combination 2, what answer do we have? 36. 2 to the power 7 is what? 128. Again? 128. 128. Minus x all to the power 2. What answer do we have? x squared. Good. 9 combination 3. What's the value? 84. 2 to the power 6. What's the answer? 64. 64. Negative x to the power 3. All to the power 3. What's the answer? Negative x cubed. Very good. So, final answer coming up. 1 times 5, 1, 2 times 1. The same answer is 5, 1, 2. Sorry. Over here. Over here. Since there's a negative sign in front of the x, which is the coefficient being negative 1, when it multiplies everything, we have to get a negative value here. So 9 times 2, 5, 6 times negative 1. What's the answer? 2,304. So negative 2,304x. Can I move on? Yes, sir. Then 36, here will be addition. It will be plus for the fact that the S coefficient is positive. So 36 times 128, what's the answer? 4,608. Again, 508? 4,608. And that will be x squared. Then final one, 84 times 64 times negative will give us a negative value. We'll have a negative value Five. there. Negative. Negative 5,376. S cube. So that is the four terms for the expansion of 2 minus x all to the power 9. All to the power 9. So you try your hand on the C and then you give me feedback later on. We have some few minutes left, but I want us to go to the next level so that we'll do something so special. 
have you seen what we have here? Can someone read it? Write down and simplify the term indicated and state its coefficient in the expansion of the following in ascending powers of x. Perfect reading. I really like that. Now, this ascending powers of x has a very great impact on the question. The ascending powers of x has a great impact on the question. So remember, when we come to binomial expansion, one crucial characteristic we realized is that with the arrangement of the question, the first term always does what? In terms of powers of in powers of that number, what happens to the first term? Does it increase? It decreases. It decreases. Good. And then the second term always does what? Increase. Increases. Mm -hmm. So it means that immediately there is a switch. It means the powers will also change. Meaning, if I write the question as negative 1 on 2x plus 2, all raised to the power 12. In writing the expansion for this, automatically the first term, or the first value in the binomial expansion negative half or to the negative half x will rather be decreasing in power whereas the x the two will be doing what mm -hmm. increasing but from the way it's written here the two will rather decrease whilst the x term will increase so now they asking you to write down and simplify the term indicated. Now over here, they want only the fourth term. But they want the final answer up to the, for the fourth term. They don't want the expansion for everything. But they are only interested in what? The term. That particular term. You remember I've said something about it. So, now, having 1 plus x, it means automatically, s value will be increasing whilst the powers for x will be increasing whilst the power for the one will be decreasing having two minus half x the powers of negative half x will be increasing whilst the two will be decreasing in power having x plus two all to the power eight when i'm writing the expansion for this what will happen to the x step in terms of powers why it, it is decrease. it will decrease if you follow whatever has been given to you in question c having it as x plus 2 all to the power 8 if you should go ahead and write the expansion for this x will decrease in power whilst 2 will increase in power as the expansion is being written but remember the question was not asking for the question was not asking for anything but ascending powers of x but what have we seen in terms of powers of x for this question it is rather what reducing isn't it yes, so how can we change the question so that it will make the x value rather increase in power what do you think we should do? So, I think when we are arranging them, mm -hmm. instead of starting with x8, we should start with x to the power 0. Can you come again? I'm interested in that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm interested in that. Yeah, please, I was saying that. Mm -hmm. The, the way we start with the higher number, then we reduce it by one. Mm -hmm. This time we should rather start from zero. Oh, so okay. that we should rather send it. Oh, okay. But don't you have any other way which you see the powers of x will rather increase, whereas the powers of two will decrease? What do you think we can do? Yeah. Yes. So you, write 2 plus x to the power 8 exactly that would be the best thing to do 
So in order for us to be able to answer the question so that the ascending powers of S can be evaluated, then it means we have to change the question and rather make it 2 plus x all to the power 8. My people, are you following? So always be careful of the language they bring on board. So maybe if the question was rather descending powers of x, then we could have maintained the arrangement like this. So that we're still having the s value reducing. But since the question changed and made it in ascending powers of x, then we don't have any choice than to stick the, with this one. We have to just interchange. Please, are you all clear? Yes, sir. Okay, let me pause for question before I start answering the question. Because it's very, very key. You know, I told you from the beginning that students find it difficult understanding binomial theorem because they think it's more of formula but they don't know the conditions attached to the questions and therefore they always get it wrong there is more to come so i beg you if you have any question or you have any doubts kindly voice it out let me explain it for you i'll be glad that i set questions and you'll be able to answer and score rather than having doubts in your mind are we all okay okay so i'm going to take one question and then probably because the time is almost up so let's consider one of them and then we answer it together it says that write down the, and simplify the term indicated and state its coefficients in the expansion for the following in ascending powers of x so ideally all the questions apart from question c whenever you write the expansion for it the s value is all automatically going to ascend in powers it's going to increase in powers it is only question c which the powers of x will rather what reduce but in order to answer question c then you just have to interchange the position of x and 2 before you answer the question. Then again, this one says we should write up to the fourth term. Okay, we should just bring out the fourth term. We should write the, the, the expansion only for the fourth term. We are only interested in the fourth term. Over here, we are interested in only the third term. Now, over here, another change is in when they ask of s cube term you must know what it means when they ask of the s to the power 5 term you must know what it means i'll be leaving you with that for you to figure it out now with the fourth term i've talked about it since we are going to use the two n combination r multiplying a to the power n minus r and then x to the power r that's the tool we are going to use to answer the question because that will make it easier if i want the fourth term in this question what r value must be used three. thank you r value must be three i've told you don't sit on the fence my people r value must be three what is our end value Twelve. Okay, so let's write it together. So having two minus half x to the power twelve, writing only the fourth term. This is going to give us twelve combination three multiplying. Yes, what is our first value? Two exponent nine. Two exponent nine. Very good then negative half x all to the power what all right all right so 12 combination 3 what's the value Two hundred and twenty. Two hundred and twenty. good 
2 to the power 9. What's the value? 512. 512. Then negative half x all to the power 3 automatically gives us negative 1 over 8 x cubed. So at the end of the day, we are going to get a negative value. So 220 times 512 times 1 over 8 was the final answer. 14080. 80. Then x to the power 3. Are you with me? Yes. So in this case, the question said we should we should write down the, and simplify the term indicated so we've written down the term indicated the fourth term for this question we've written down the fourth term and then state its coefficient so what's the coefficient the coefficient yes what's the coefficient what's the coefficient 14,080. Are you sure it is just 14,080? It's a negative 14,080. Negative 14,080. 14, so that is it. Please, are you all clear with what I've just done? Yes, sir. Yes, now, sir. I'm just going to give you a clue as to how to understand the SQ term and when they use the fourth term. I'm just going to give you a clue as to understand when they say find the S term, SQ term, and then when they say fourth term. Now, when we wrote down the fourth term, what was the power for X? Three. Three. So, Three. in other words, when they talk of fourth term, remember it's the same as the S cube term. And when they talk about S cube term, it means you are writing what? The fourth term. It's rather the fourth term. It's rather the fourth term. All right. So let me take the last question. Let me take the last question, which is B. So that's A. Having 1 plus x to the power 20, and we are looking out for the third term. Then the question is, what R value must we use so that we'll end up getting the third term? R value must be what? 2. 2. Very good. Per this question, what is our end value? 20. 20. 20. Good. So writing only the third term for this expansion. It's supposed to be, yes, can someone just quote it? 20 combination 2. 20 combination 2 multiplying 1 to the power 18. Very good. 18. Multiplying x to the to power, power 2. Very good. 20 combination 2, what's the value? 190. So 190. 1 to the power 18 is the same as 1. And x to the power 2 is the same as x squared. So final answer is 190 x squared. My people, are you with me? Yes, sir. All right. Good. So what I would like you to do, so watch again. It means when they talk of the third term, another way they could have used is that find the S squared term. When they talk of third term, another way they can use is what? Find the what? X squared term. The S squared term. So know the differences. When they use the third term, is the same as the S squared term. When they use the fourth term, is the same as the S cubed term. Take note of that. So in other words, when they talk about the variable raised to a particular number term, all that you need to do in order to get the answer is to what? 
fourth term is the same as s cubed term. So if they talk of s cubed term, how do I get the, the term itself? I just add one, then I'll know the term to use. Please help I'm clear. Yes, sir. All right. Thanks so much for joining the lesson. I'm privileged having you. And if there is no question to be asked, I wish you all the best for the day. You can inbox me for any question I'll respond. And once again, kindly visit my YouTube channel, Math Made Easy with PDY. Subscribe to the channel and more videos are there for you to watch and study hard. Thank you and have a lovely day. Bye-bye. God bless you.